Okay. Uh, my name is Jeremy Rivera, and I'm the Director of SEO and Marketing here at Raven Tools. Uh, this is our demo walkthrough webinar for our platform. Um, I'll be taking you through uh, most of the features um, covering uh, the fundamentals. There are quite a bit of different tools that have some very specific capabilities. I'll try to do my best to give you a, a good insight of everything that we can do um, for your marketing campaign, whether you're an in-house SEO or whether you're an agency or just a small business owner who wants a good overview for their company. Um, so this is the dashboard view that you should see. Uh, Raven Tools is divided up uh, into a system of pro profiles and campaigns. Uh, when you signed up for your trial uh, and you signed up for your, for your account, uh, you should have had the option to create a profile and create a campaign. Uh, this allows you to sort and organize uh, your efforts if you have multiple uh, projects that you're working on, or if you have multiple clients, um, setting them up as separate profiles instead of keeping them uh, all under the My Profile category that can help you organize your efforts. Um, you can, of course, have multiple campaigns under each of those profiles. Raven Tools uh, originally started out as support software for an agency called Sightning. And so a lot of the functionality and uses have grown out of that mindset of what is it that an agency really needs to do. And, and with that, that's uh, why we have uh, white label options, everything from being able to customize the logos here, um, but you can also uh, go so far as to edit the logo image, edit your favicon that shows at the top of the page. Um, you can even create, design a custom login page um, that displays a specific logo for your company and even change the footer at the bottom of the product itself. You can scroll down here and see this is the custom white label footer. Um, so the default view that we start you off with is this dashboard view, which is really, um, been updated recently to be the same engine as our what you see is what you get. Uh, it used to be that the dashboard was a separate experience and you couldn't publish it or send it on to clients, but we, re we realized that it, since it was the first thing that people saw, they would be setting up these reports and get kind of frustrated that they couldn't share it. So it actually shares the exact same um, setup and system as our what you see is what you get reports. Um, and our, and we have three existing uh, templates that are available for new reports um, to help you get started. Um, there are one-time reports as well as scheduled reports. It's very important to know the difference between the two, a, an ad hoc report as a URL that exists exactly the same um, going forward. Um, and then there are scheduled reports that use a template and will generate a new URL um, that can be shared with the client going forward. So, you know, be, be sure that you're aware of that difference because if you create a one-time report, send it to the client and the next month rolls around and you come in and edit that one-time report again, that obviously is going to, you know, you can't see the older version of that report. Um, so let's go ahead and, and dive into uh, the what you see is what you get um, reporting engine. Um, first and foremost, uh, this is connecting to all of the data sources that we have. Um, you can, of course, start with uh, particular templates and share those templates um, with other accounts. So if you end up creating a report for another account and it kind of becomes you know, your de facto template that you always want to use, um, then you can pull that template from uh, another profile where you've already taken the time to set that up. So just click the use template and it will pull in these boxes. Now, a couple of functionality things that you need to know. Um, first, you can always change the logo. So if you're in one, pro one profile and you want the customer's logo to show up here instead of your agency logo, uh, that's fine. Uh, you can swap that out. Um, the next is uh, that there are 
specific sections that get created for the metrics and you can hop back and forth between them but this little gray bar tab will allow you to quickly change the order and you know we, if we want the site auditor problems to crop up first um, they're going to show up here next is you've got this kind of uh, widgetized view where you've got these individual widgets um, that you can get more information about. Uh, you can edit this individual, we call it a KPI box, um, and you can duplicate that particular KPI. Uh, if you edit this particular KPI, um, you can choose where it is pulling that information from for this particular section of data. So this is pulling from the site auditor tool. And so all of the individual KPIs you can select out specifically um, and you can choose how it displays. Um, you can also choose how you're going to compare that to previous pieces of information. You can rename the particular widget, or you can send this one little widget piece to another uh, section of your report. And so if you want to change the order of these, there's that little gray grab bar here, and you can uh, short, sort these around as needed. Um, and if you don't want to report on blocked pages, just delete the widget, it's gone. Um, so if you wanna control uh, the settings for uh, timing and when this report is going to go out, uh, then you're going to click on the report settings option in the top right corner. Um, and you can change it from a one-time report to a scheduled report choose whether that's going to be monthly, daily, weekly, or quarterly, and then choose which month a year. Um, if it's daily, you're choosing, uh, obviously you don't have any extra option. If it's weekly, you choose when it goes out. If it's monthly, then you choose whether that's going out on the first of the month or, or the fifth. I know a lot of agencies do uh, reporting at the end, end slash beginning of the month. And then you're going to choose the date range uh, that this report is going to be looking at, whether that's last month, this month, a custom range of days or a custom range of months, or from a fixed start date or uh, a rolling last 30 days. Um, and you can check this box to keep all section dates to that particular date range during the scheduling. Now, this is where you can take this, whatever you come up with, and make it a template available across all of your profiles. And then you submit. And now this is a scheduled report. Um, now, you may have noticed that there are some additional options here. Uh, all of our reports, uh, actually, let me uh, preview this. And so just so that I can show you what the end generated report is going to look like, it's going to crop up at a new URL um, and that's shareable to the client. Uh, there are settings that I'm going to show you in just a moment where you can configure what email that sends out from, um, but it's going to show up almost like 99% exactly the same as it, as you, you saw in the widgets. Um, obviously the control edits on uh, in the the gear boxes are all gone, but all of the KPIs show up, all of the charts and graphs and tables appear, and then there's an export PDF option. Um, we recently added some additional um, options for that PDF download. You can add a cover page for that PDF download, and you can also set up a, sub a table of contents for that PDF. Um, here's the control for that scheduled email settings. Um, you can configure who it's going out to, if there's any blind carbon copies, the subject line, um, and whether it's going to be sent as an HTML link, a PDF link, or a PDF attachment. So giving you complete control on how these reports go out. Um, so now we can take a look at all of the available metrics uh, that you can use in your WYSIWYG reports. Um, there's of course a text block summary where you can, uh, with the WYSIWYG editor, add images, uh, create bullet points lists. This is a report. And then choose whether it's going to go into an existing section or again go into uh, an overview section, uh, a new section that you've added. 
and that goes down to the bottom. We want to bring that up to the top. There we go. Um, and we can add more metrics. We pull from Google Analytics. We pull from Google AdWords, uh, YouTube, Facebook, Facebook ads. Um, and we have data from Backlink Explorer, as well as uh, an import option from Authority Labs if you're currently using them for your data tracking, uh, for ranking tracking. Um, you can attach files, which are uh, PDFs, or you can attach uh, import data if you've got CSV files. Um, if you want to show a table of data, uh, then you can grab a CSV, import it, and display it as you need it. Um, otherwise, there's going to be pulls from our specific tools. Um, now, for each of these different sections, we're going to have kind of an existing data set, like a summary. This one includes the total issues. This one's a specific section about pay desktop page speed. This one's a, an update uh, showing mobile page speed. But you can always go to the Create Custom Widget option and choose to pull one specific KPI metric or table that you would like to add. Um, and that's kind of where a lot of the flexibility in the reporting comes from. Um, uh, I'm going to be going through the overall platform, which uh, gives you additional options. This is just for the reporting view, um, pulling from these different data connectors. So we can add my uh, Twitter activity if I have Twitter connected. Um, and if you don't, it's going to prompt you to connect Twitter so we can get that data. So this is a a display of our backlink data from Majestic. Um, these are the KPI boxes showing how many backlinks we have. This is a chart, uh, a table showing the URLs where the links are coming from, their citation flow metrics, anchor text information. Um, the only other thing that you need to know um, is obviously since this is um, a scheduled report. Um, it's going to preview changes before they're made. Um, so you can uh, take a look and see how it's going to look as a live report when it gets sent out. Once it does get sent out, um, you can come in and edit it after the fact. So just be aware of the difference between your scheduled report and your non-scheduled. Um, speaking of further reports, we do have email metrics available from uh, third-party campaigns. You can pull in data from Aweber, Campaign Monitor, Constant Contact, and Emma, and MailChimp. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have any of those set up to pull data in at the moment. Um, next demo, I certainly will set that up. Um, now I'm going to go through the long list here of all of our uh, specialty tools, all of the things that we can do um, to help you research your SEO. So the first uh, two major tools that we have is our site auditor tool and our site auditor studio. So um, it, for a, a long time, we have only we only had one site auditor tool, and it would allow you to create a report that would uh, give a display of just how many crawl errors you had, give a description of, you know, what, uh, how many missing meta descriptions you had, how many meta titles were missing. Um, and so we found that we wanted to have an additional site auditor tool. And so we ended up building what was then a standalone site auditor tool. Um, recently in the past month, we have included that into the platform because we didn't want to just list out the number of issues that this site has. Uh, we also wanted to be able to list out uh, exactly which URLs have issues. Um, so I'm going to jump over to Uh, so if you're in the site auditor uh, section, click on the visit site auditor studio, and it's going to take you to the new tool. Um, so it's going to display a score, show you the total number of issues, and then actually break down, um, hey, here's the page errors, and it's going to actually list out, hey, this page has uh, 404, and the option to mark it as fixed. So if you're an on-site 
uh, if you're an in-house SEO and you kind of want to report to your boss and say, hey, here are the problems that we have. Um, these pages are all missing meta descriptions. You can create a shareable link, copy it to your clipboard, and send this over to your copywriter or send this over to your uh, web developer and say, hey, these pages are missing a meta description. Or, or if you're in charge of it yourself, then as soon as you write that meta description, you don't have to recrawl it and hope that it picks it up. Instead, you can mark that as fixed off of here. Um, you can also, if you take a look, you know, because we're trying to surface all of the common errors in a site that you can find through crawling. Um, and so sometimes we're a little bit aggressive, like internal links missing anchor or alt text. Maybe this isn't a big priority for you. Maybe your organization really just needs to focus on, um, you know, just having, you know, meta titles and meta descriptions that are written. So you don't want this showing up in this audit that you're sharing to your boss or sharing with your client. So you can hide those internal issues, um, those internal links. Um, and of course, you can share this uh, overview link, and it's going to give you this entire overview page. Uh, so if you're uh, doing an outbound call and prospecting for somebody and saying, hey, uh, come and work with us as an agency, you can send them this link and say, you know, we did um, some initial auditing on your site and we found these particular issues. Here are the URLs that are infected. And here's what we can do about it as an agency. We think it'll take this long, this many resources, and this is going to be the impact once those are corrected. Um, so that is the Site Auditor uh, Studio. You can, of course, choose to uh, crawl that on a regular basis. You can choose how deep it's going to crawl or block certain pages from, from the crawler. So it's a very simple approach to uh, our Site Auditor. Um, now, there is one cool feature that we haven't implemented yet into the Site Auditor Studio, and that is a crawl comparison. Um, our original Site Auditor tool does have that capability. If you have a previous crawl, um, then you can show it on a baseline and show the difference in the crawl. So um, as soon as another crawl gets scheduled for this particular domain, you'll be able to show that benchmark report, you know, how we did, how we were able to fix these things. We integrate very closely with Google Analytics um, so that you can quickly surface um, and visualize, you know, how is this campaign actually doing? You know, what areas um, are growing and what are, are what's doing worse? So overall, we've lost 17% of sessions, but that's partially coming from this decrease in direct. Um, whereas we've had an increase in paid, we've had an increase in referral traffic, and we've had an increase in organic traffic. So with these KPIs and with the delta next to them and very easily visualized, you can quickly visualize uh, for your client and say, hey, this is what's going on. And this individual tool can generate uh, separate distinct reports from the WYSIWYG uh, report generator. Um, so if you just want to report on these main Google Analytics KPIs, uh, you can pull them very quickly into a neat little report and send it on its way over to your customer. Um, you can also slice and dice, um, you know, dig deep into what's going in, going on on these pages, um, kind of visualize, uh, you know, which pages are doing well, which pages are doing worse. Um, you can identify if there are particular ad campaigns that are, are bringing some additional activity. And, uh, you know, if you have your goals connected properly, both here and in another place, um, you'll be able to surface that information. Um, talking about goals and talking about organic, we integrate with uh, both Google Analytics and Search Console so that we can highlight you know, your organic success. So this pool filters um, the organic data from Google Analytics because uh, sometimes you just wanna know how the SEO portion of the site is doing. And we can 
quickly surface these KPIs at the top and show, hey, we're actually growing a little bit. Um, and if you have your goals on your site configured correctly, then you can actually surface which of those goals came from organic versus uh, came from paid or dr uh, direct clicks. Um, let me see if I have another campaign, Tennessee contracting. Here we go. Um, so this will show change and you can control the date up here on the time range that we're looking at, whether it's the last 30 days versus the previous period. Uh, you can review whether there are particular landing pages that are driving um, a higher number of goals than others um, and whether that lines up with your expectations. Uh, and you can sort any of these uh, categories here. Um, some industries do manage to get additional contacts and, and conversions, and we can see here that organic isn't limited just to Google. There are actually three conversions for this account coming from Bing traffic. Um, so Bing and Yahoo are not dead, um, particularly in a lot of uh, industries for homeowners. Um, and uh, we also have configured, if you uh, use our link manager system and identify um, the number of links that you have. You can identify if if some of your conversions um, and tra uh, transactions came from referral traffic from links that you've built elsewhere. Um, and this top searches section just connects to that Google Search Console data set uh, for your top searches. Um, now we have some additional tools coming very soon. Um, right now we're doing an audience survey of uh, whether or not you guys want some rank tracking tools. Um, there's a long history with Raven and, and rank tracking um, and we're seriously considering how that's, that fits into our our platform. So your feedback is very appreciated. Um, we're going to be closing this survey very soon, but if you get in there and submit your input, uh, we are going to select two entries for a $75 Amazon gift card. So that's very cool. I uh, look forward to seeing uh, you know, uh, the input from that and being able to take some additional action. Um, now, we do have a Google Search Analytics tool, which connects to Google Search Console data um, through their API. Um, and unfortunately, it's not the new, uh, you may have seen that the new iteration of Search Console uh, that goes back all time or beyond three months worth of data. They haven't yet opened up that API for us or anybody else. Um, as soon as they do, we're going to update this platform and extend the amount of data that we have. But for right now, it is that traditional um, three month window worth of information that we can look at. Um, but you can filter by clicks, impressions, CTRs. Um, you can look at your pages, uh, which ones are, are surfacing. Um, it's going to batch them up here and show, you know, your position delta change, and then you can quickly toggle between web, image, and, and video results. Um, and I do just want to jump back to this queries really fast. We do have an option for you to uh, sort by branded or non-branded. Um, if you go to your settings under campaign settings, you can choose what your brand names are. And if you connect those, then it will uh, segment and identify um, in that tool, um, uh, segment and identify which of your queries are branded and which are non-branded, which is a great way to kind of segment and say, okay, well, 90% of our traffic is brand and we only have 10 that's uh, from our organic search campaign. Um, we also can break down country traffic, countries and which devices are sending Google search console data. Um, so it's it's pretty much all here. So if you want to be able to report on your Google uh, Search Console performance, uh, this is the tool and widget that you're going to pull from in those WYSIWYG reports. Um, we also have a Bing Webmaster Tools integration, um, which will actually show your average position data from Bing. 
um, and we combine it with Google Analytics for your conversions and visits. Um, unfortunately, don't currently have any uh, Webmaster Tools campaign set up on our demo accounts, but I'm going to set that up for our next time around. Um, next category of tools that we have within Raven are meant to help out uh, link builders. Um, so our Backlink Explorer is powered by Majestic. Um, they have a pretty decent sized uh, backlink uh, uh, profile, um, arguably one of the largest. I think Ahrefs argues that they are and Moz that they, says that they are. So um, we're pretty happy with Majestic. They give us a pretty good snapshot. Um, so once you plug in the domain, um, it's going to surface the total number of, of backlinks that you have. Um, and you can choose to group those domains and that'll surface how many um, links you have uh, from, from that particular source. Of course, if you're wanting to do competitive research, um, you know, you can plug in a, a competitor, but sometimes you might not know who that is, right? Who is the competitor for this Nashville roofer? Um, so this is a tool, so you can come into the site finder and do Nashville roofing. Um, and it's going to identify the top 10 uh, companies that are ranking for Nashville roofing. So that's very handy to quickly surface, hey, who are our competitors? Um, but if you click run, it'll actually uh, do an aggregated report of across those 10 domains of all of the uh, competitors links. Um, and so then you can dig through and identify, oh, hey, they've got uh, uh, TNREA, um, GAF. So these are common domains across them. So you can say, okay, I want to go and get this link because all of the competitors out there have that common, dom common domain. Um, and you can look for uh, easy wins when it comes to link building. Um, so back to the uh, Backlink Explorer. Um, if we've grabbed our competitor and we're looking uh, for links to nashvilleroofingco.com, um, we have a choice of searching the fresh index, the historic index, and you can even uh, you can check either the entire domain or you can check backlinks on a on a single URL only. Um, so if you want to know if uh, a particular infographic or pop blog post has particular links for you to back uh, for you to go after, you can check just the singular singular URL. Um, so let's take a look at the Nashville Roofing Company and see if they have any tasty links that we can get in and, and snipe out. So we've got uh, roofing contactors, regional directories. Okay. Uh, it's not the worst that I've seen. Um, I'm not getting bombarded with ads. There are kind of a lot of listings here, so it'd be up to your judgment. Say, you know, it, it's just a directory, but you know, it might be worth our time. So if you check this box, you can send it to your link manager system. So once it gets added to our link manager. then we can come in and get some additional metrics for this particular link. Um, it's, got a, it's got a domain authority of 54, page authority of 33, citation flow, trust flow, combined Moz rank. Okay, well, I guess, um, I guess I'll look up this site and see, you know, is there some contact information um, that I can get for this domain? Um, Let's see if we can find where to submit. Um, once you identify some content, oh, there it is, submit your website. Um, so this is a contact form. So let's see, this is a competitor backlink. I'm going to go ahead and submit this site and change the status to requested. Um, and then I'm going to make sure that my link monitoring Go to Tool Options, Link Monitoring, and I'm going to check off for our system to automatically check these link rec records with requested status. 
Um, so it's going to come in and on a regular, on a daily basis, um, on a I think it's on a daily basis. I'll have to double check that, folks. <laughs> on a regular basis, it's going to come back and check this link and see if it is has become active, whether there is a link uh, to from this page uh, to uh, the tennis, Tennessee Contracting Services. So this is so we're going to add in the destination URL and whatever we submitted. Um, has the anchor text for that link and we submit submit this and add it. Uh, we're going to make a note and say we submitted this directory. Or if you want to send this task off to a specific user, um, if there's one particular person um, on your team, you can say submit this directory and we'll assign it to Rohan. Um, you can attach it to a particular contact. You can create this as, as, as a task for somebody within Raven Tools for them to follow up on. Um, and it's automatically going to search and check and it'll change it to active once it identifies that that link has been acquired. Um, so that's how Raven Tools can be used as a link building platform. There is one additional thing here that I glossed over, and that's that we have our own small CRM system. Um, so you can create a contact. It's going to try to pull in, and sometimes it will get lucky and be able to pull um, some contact information um, automatically from the site. But if you, it doesn't pull it automatically, you can input information uh, from the website so that you can uh, create a contact and follow up with them. If it wasn't a contact form, if it was a, a, a email address or a separate URL for you to follow up on, you can create a contact. Um, so that's our link, uh, link manager system. Um, link manager, site finder, backlink. Explorer. Next, we've got our competitor research tool. Um, we actually have a couple flavors of competitor research to go through. The first tool is called our, our site performance tool. And I really like this because it lines up the competitors uh, side by side in these tables and shows you, you know, who, who's, who's going to win. Um, you know, side by side, we've got metrics from Majestic and Moz. So that's number of external backlinks um, from Majestic and Moz, citation flow, trust flow. Uh, we also bar borrow some site metrics from our SEO crawler, um, and we kind of identify, you know, page speed, load time, um, you know, whether there's a robots.txt file, whether Google Analytics is there. Um, as well as some social metrics, how many shares does this site have? Um, Clout just went out of business, so we're working to replace this metric with a new social metric score. I don't know who that's going to be from yet. Um, but this system also has a benchmarking uh, utility where if you just want to know uh, how your campaign is doing over time. Uh, are you, have you been able to grow the authority metrics for the site overall? Um, you can grab these stats um, and generate the, a quick report, either as a, a separate URL or as a PDF and send that off to your client. Uh, da -da -da. The next competitor research tool is similar in nature. Um, it's our competitor manager tool, and you can add as many additional uh, competitors to this table as, as you'd like. Um, you can go to that site finder tool and grab those top competitors um, and add them line by line to the system. It'll show their quality score, their Moz rank, and uh, number of links that they have. Um, and you can take it over to our our research central and compare these 
domains a little bit more in depth. Um, so this is going to compare Tennessee contracting uh, with, uh, say, Don Kennedy Roofing.com. And it's going to show total number of links over time. Um, so you can actually get kind of a, a feel of whether there's an active link building process going on or whether your competitors are losing links over time compared to you. Um, this is the, uh, this is the uh, domain research central portion. Um, so you're able to actually get quite a bit of additional KPIs and information about this uh, domain. Um, and it, you can see the number of referring domains, external links, uh, trust flow, citation flow, um, as well as graphed out domain distribution. Um, there is a couple of really cool tools tucked away in this section. Uh, if you are like me and you don't quite trust third-party metrics and you're like, okay, it's a, a 50 out of 100, I don't know what that actually means. You can actually come in and create based off of our available site metrics, social metrics, authority and ranking metrics. Uh, you can basically create your own report. Um, and once you add, you know, Alexa citation flow, I'll just add a couple of these. Once you've added these in, then you can choose, you know, how influential it is. Um, in that way, if your Alexa rank is really good and you think that's important, then it's high score. If you don't think citation flow is a good metric, but it's okay, then you can reduce its influence. Um, so you can create a really custom report score and save that. And then you can create that report for that quality analyzer and um, send that off as your part of your initial audit, audit or analysis. Um, we have a number of different tools available within this section. Um, you know, if you want just a quick uh, data from IBM Watson, how it understands your site, um, this is a good way to tell if you um, have good semantic relevance for your content. Um, it's going to look through and kind of suggest additional keywords um, based off of its analysis of a page. Um, so Hendersonville roofing technicians, maybe you don't have technicians. So this can help broaden out your keyword research efforts. Um, we do have um, we do have search volume provided um, in our platform. So if you want to look up some Nashville roofing uh, keywords and get them added to your keyword manager system. Uh, you can get the uh, search volume information and the advertiser competition. Uh, once you check this off, uh, you can send it over to the keyword manager and that's going to plug it in and connect it into our system and potentially grab uh, information from Google Analytics, also will grab from your AdWords campaign if you're advertising for that, that keyword, it'll pull the, that additional information for you. Um, so because Raven Tools has been around for a while, we're not just SEO tools, um, we're pretty broad and diverse. Um, so we have a lot of social media management tools as well as social media metrics tools. Um, let me switch over to my profile because I think I have all of them configured correctly here. There we go. Um, so in Twitter, um, we've got our timeline here. Um, you can create a new post. Um, you can add your campaign variables. You can shorten your URLs, upload an image to go along with your tweet. 
um, and then schedule it for, to, for it to go out at a particular day or time. So you can actually create a campaign of tweets. Uh, you can review uh, your mentions, um, look through your lists that you've created um, or your searches. And once you've done all your uh, social media managing, you can actually look at your Twitter statistics um, and see how, how you're doing. Are you gaining in followers, total number of mentions, retweet reach, posts, replies, reply reach. If you're doing any sort of social media management for customers, these are fantastic KPIs to be able to quickly grab and report out um, and show how you're doing over time. Um, similar with Facebook, uh, with your Facebook uh, pages, uh, you can uh, connect your company and make post to your Facebook business pages. Uh, you can't post to personal pages. Um, same with your YouTube account, or not YouTube account, same with your LinkedIn account. Uh, you can publish to your business profile and create company posts through LinkedIn. Uh, again, schedule them and create them and add an image that's going to go out along with them. Um, you can also manage your YouTube channel uh, from our interface, looking at uh, recent metrics for your videos, see how many comments and views you have and be able to report on them. Um, we also have integration with, uh, we have integration with Facebook ads, Google AdWords and Bing ads. Um, let's see, I think Social Southern Industrial Tools has AdWords. So let's just pull that up. What I really like is this surfacing of these key KPIs right at the top. So you can tell if your, your campaign is effective, um, been able to reduce the cost per click, reduce the overall cost while increasing the number of clicks. That's what you really want to see is a, an improvement in those cost per click scores. Unfortunately, they don't have their conversion metrics set up correctly, so it's not reporting accurately on the cost per conversion. So you'd want to go into that campaign and identify, you know, what is the actual uh, conversion value um, and make sure that that's reporting correctly. Um, we also have Facebook ads. Let me just quickly see if I have any accounts currently running Facebook ads. I was really excited to show this because we just added custom conversions. Um, unfortunately, I don't have a data set to show, but Facebook ads does have custom conversion information um, as well as uh, your general uh, Facebook social advertising metrics. The last section that we have is our content manager. Um, and in our content manager, let's see, do I have any, here we go. So no niche is too small for a blog. It's going to actually analyze it with a scribe integration. So scribe is a content scoring tool. Um, so if you click edit, If you click edit, it's going to uh, give you your readability score, uh, a scribe document score, and uh, give you some additional suggestions on how you can improve this. If you're ordering content from other sources, this is a great way to vet and verify that the content that you're receiving is high quality. And hey, if you don't have a third party, uh, if you don't have a content writer, uh, you can order content through this system. Uh, we have an integration with Text Broker, and uh, it it's places the order through our system. Um, and you can order that content, choose the star right rating, and pull it in. Um, last but not least, we do have uh, direct WordPress integration. Um, once you get your blog added, uh, Let's see if I can get mine added. Once you get your blog added to the system, you can actually publish your blog posts um, directly from the WordPress platform. 
Um, mine's not configured correctly yet. <laughs> um, but you can use the content manager to uh, add posts here, publish them, edit them, and take them offline. So if you have five or six different customers where you're creating content and pushing it out on a regular basis, it can be a great tool. Um, last but not least, least, we have two additional features. Uh, we've got an event manager, uh, which can help you keep track of additional metrics and uh, metrics based off of a particular event that happened in your account. Um, and you can uh, manage tags for your keywords uh, and your competitors, so you can kind of keep track of uh, those cross campaign settings. Uh, last but not least, here's your campaign settings where you can change any of these default settings. If you speak a different language, if you're using a different currency or in a different time zone or want to set your brand names, this is where you control it. Um, the task manager system is available in the top right corner. The CRM system is also available in the top right corner. And last but also, not least, is you can always do a command find if you're wondering where our search console information is. We've got a handy tool finder um, that can help you get where you need to go within Raven. Um, and that's pretty much it. I mean, there's a lot to cover there. We're releasing one piece at a time, a deeper walkthrough of each of the individual tools. So stay tuned to our, our Twitter account and Facebook feed for those additional demos and walkthroughs. Um, hope that this was helpful for you. Have a great day.